Hello and welcome back to another Doctor Who action figure review. In today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the creation of the Daleks set, the latest figure set from B&M, and the first of the final wave of figures for B&M this year. This is certainly going to be a popular set because it is the first time we've seen the Michael Wisher Davros figure released since its initial release as a Forbidden Planet exclusive way back in 2010, I want to say. I could be completely wrong there. But it's a long overdue re-release and it's not just a re-release, it's an improvement not just for Davros but the Dalek as well and honestly this is probably my favourite set of all of the sets we've had this year. It's fantastic. But before we get into that, let's take a look at the packaging. The figures come packaged in the standard window box, very similar to the History of the Dalek sets as they were released before. So that means we have the proper window, we've got the bubble that the figures are sat in, and we have the backdrop, which we'll come to in a bit. So it looks great. It has the usual style guide of the Doctor Who figures as we've come to know it. It's got the gold limited edition foil sticker. And then on the back of the box, we have a synopsis about the story, Genesis of the Daleks. And then, as I said, it has a diorama backdrop, which is unmistakable as the little area where Davros first tests out the Dalek firepower, where Sarah Jane spots it hidden behind the wall. And you even have the little Thal target that the Dalek shoots so out of the box, the figures look great. Immediately, I was wowed by the paint job on Davros and the paint job on the Dalek is also fantastic. It's not just that the paint's improved, there's a lot of cool little features with this set. Let's start with Davros, we'll save the Dalek. So Davros, had, like I said earlier, had previously come out many moons ago. It's the first time this particular version of Davros has been re-released. And I think for most of this review, I'm going to be comparing it to what we had before. And immediately, stuff has improved in terms of the head, where we have a great wash over the face, which was one of my criticisms of the original figure, actually. But this time we have a wash over the face that really brings out the effectiveness of that sculpt. There have been other subtle improvements as well to the head area in as much as the wires around the top going into his eye. As you can see, we've got the black wires going in. On the original, it was blue. Likewise, if you move down to where we've got the little microphone, again, it's improved in as much as, at least on my version, his one was a little bit wonky, a little bit bent out of shape. Here, it seems to be um, a bit more straighter. And of course, around the back, we've got the rest of the headrest, that blue headrest there with the little holes in it and the little silver pin there, which looks great. Obviously, we've got the tunic, which looks great as well. Very well sculpted, all the creases and all the details of the seams and everything and around the neck and down the front. It's just very well done. But for me, the thing that I was really hoping for, because we did kind of know that this Davros set was going to come out. It was leaked, unfortunately. Uh, not the contents, but we knew that there was a, a Davros-related set with a Dalek coming out this year. And the one thing that I was hoping would get rectified was the back, because on my original one, the back of the seat was just an absolute mess. And I'm pleased to say that on this new one, it's very straight-backed. And then moving down to his control panel, again, there's been a lot of improvement here. It's similar in terms of the colours and the positioning of the, the buttons and everything, but the colours are just improved and, and even the sharpness of the mould is a lot better, at least compared to my original Genesis Stavros. And the little toggle switches, you've got the clear red ones and then the yellow ones. The colouring on here is much brighter. It's not quite so cloudy. It was kind of cloudy on the original ones. They both have the transparent backs, but whereas the original had a very solid matte yellow area around those red and blue lights. This one has a far more accurate translucent orange, which looks great. Towards the fender, again, he's got a very specific fender with those sort of two bumpers on the front. This is again in that same brilliant silver, but you also have the uh, dark wash over it just to make it look like Davros has scuffed things as he's been moving around. It's a bit heavier than I think I would have liked. Could have been slightly lighter, perhaps. I don't think he's quite as bad as bumping into things as perhaps the Daleks are. Uh, but honestly, that is a very, very minor gripe. Uh, and of course, he does have his little feature from before, 
where if you press the hemisphere, you can open up the side of his chair and you get to see all the inner workings of his life support systems and stuff. And this has all again been, just like with the original ones, has been finished off with a slightly metallic wash. And it just brings out all of the uh, circuitry and stuff. And it looks great. It's a fun little feature that definitely try and get this because you're going to want it. Even if you have the original set, definitely get hold of this because it is a real upgrade to what we had before. And then we move on to our Dalek, which is, of course, a grey standard drone Dalek. Now, this colour of Dalek is already much improved compared to the original ones. The original ones were sort of bluish in there, had a bluish hue to them. These ones are very grey and very glossy, which is brilliant. And you'll find that not only in this set, but also in the History of the Daleks Genesis set. Now, there are a few differences between this Dalek and the Dalek in the History of the Daleks set, which I will bring up uh, later on. But this is a very interesting Dalek that on the surface, it looks like your standard drone. Uh, and, you know, it is and it fits in as a standard drone. It's great. Like I said, fantastic paint finish, very much improved in terms of accuracy. We've got the Mini Cooper dome lights on top. My only criticism for the Dalek is that he doesn't have the grey on the eye stalk like all of the Daleks in that story do. It's a shame because the history of the Daleks versions do have that. Uh, so it's a teeny minor gripe. It's a little nitpick. And we've got the glossy black on the eye and the pupil. It's really great. You've got the mesh around the neck bin, the slats and mesh around the shoulder section. There's no silver or anything to bring out the mesh because they didn't have it. They were just all flat gray. And then you've got glossy, glossy black on the hemispheres. You've got the oval between the gun and the plunger. And then much like Davros, you've got the slight silver tarnished effect on the fender as well. Again, that's in a glossy black underneath. It looks great. And that's the two step fender. But what about the other exciting features? And what about those little extras that come packaged with Davros. Well, I kind of guessed straight away when I saw it in the packaging and I was pleasantly surprised when I came to do it. In that story, there's a couple of instances where you see a Dalek without a gun stick and a Dalek without a plunger. And I'm pleased to say that you can pull out the Dalek gun and it comes out of the ball socket with the ball joint attached. It's all one solid piece and the cavity behind has been filled. So it looks just like it does in the episode and you can do exactly the same with the plunger it pops out and you can see it's the full ball joint and then you've got these holes in the back well what plugs into those holes these little power packs and you can see it's got the little attachment like a plug those plug into the holes of both your plunger and your gun stick because if you remember when you see the episode when they're putting the gun stick into the dalek They've got all these wires and cables and things. So that just recreates that look. You can then display your Dalek however you want. You can have both the gun stick and the plunger out with the wires hanging out. You can have one or the other inside, depending on what scene you're recreating. It's so good. And if we look at the Dalek gun, it's the bronze version of the gun. So it's got that bronze finish. The only thing I will say is that on the plunger, there is a bit of paint rub. Uh, that has come off when I pulled the ball joint out. So the power packs are just a load of wires and then a little box at the end. They're black plastic with a silver wash over the top, just to bring out some of the details. It's uh, a fantastic set, and I absolutely love that we've now got these uh, little power pack things. That's great. So in terms of articulation, Davros has the same articulation as all the previous Davros figures. He has articulation at the head, which is kind of limited by the fact that he's got the neck brace at the back, but you can kind of turn it. I mean, Davros doesn't really turn his head much anyway. Uh, then we've got the articulation at the shoulder. This goes up and down, again, slightly hindered by the back piece of his chair. Uh, we have articulation at the bicep, that goes all the way around, at the elbow, which pivots up and down. And of course, we have articulation at the wrist, uh, which is kind of stiff. Uh, you can pull the wrist out, but um, this is obviously where it's interchangeable. When I got this, it was really stiff. I blasted it with a hairdryer. It started turning fine, and now it's got quite stiff again. So maybe be very careful with uh, trying to turn Davros's hand. But, I mean, it is possible. Uh, but, you know, if it seems a bit stiff, 
you know, just try and use a hairdryer or some boiling water on it. And then much like with the Daleks, he's on three wheels, all of which rotate uh, independently. So he has even better movement than your standard Dalek. And for the Dalek, in terms of articulation, he has all of the standard articulation. Rotatable dome, like so, which is a little bit stiff. Eye stalk, which pivots up and down. Ball jointed gum, and then ball jointed plunger. Again, be very, very aware that the more you pull out the plunger, the more the paint comes off, uh, which is a real shame. It doesn't affect the uh, the gun stick, but that plunger really does have a bit of trouble with paint flake. And then, of course, you've got the standard Dalek wheels, the two at the back and the rotating one at the front to allow a range of full Dalek movement. So there we go, guys. That is the creation of the Dalek set. Not only an improvement on the Davros figure, but it comes with a greatly improved Dalek with some fun little features that uh, allows you many display options. Uh, and I think this is definitely going to be one people are going to want to get hold of. And I imagine it's going to sell out very quickly. Hopefully this means we'll get some Davros sets in the future. You know, I can imagine the sort of things we'll get when we get to Terry Malloy. Uh, and some of his Dalek stories. So we'll just have to wait and see. But thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Good luck tracking down the figures uh, when they come out. And stay tuned for another Doctor Who action figure review coming very soon. Bye-bye.